Hello and welcome to uh, today's edition of the Evening Review. My name is Tewan Jobela, your host for tonight. Tonight in the show we have uh, an interview with the Governor of Commerce Region uh, speaking to us about the preparations for this year's Independence Anniversary and uh, many other things, including how the ruling party did in Commerce uh, in the 2019 general elections. Stay tuned for that. So let's... Uh, let us review the front page of today's Namibian Sun. Um, it is uh, an edition centered around the fish rot bribery scandal. As you would see, um, we spoke to the governors and other me board members uh, serving on the fish, fish co board of directors, specifically to say if the chairperson of the board was arrested and the CEO of the board was uh, the, the CEO of the company was arrested. Why are these uh, board members, uh, what, what, what kind of answers can these board members give in light of their fiduciary uh, responsibilities? You see Governor Ngama there saying that uh, he did not know uh, or that a lot of these things happened way before they became board members or that they did not know uh, that uh, management and their chairperson was uh, busy behind the scenes with uh, other things. And of course, we have on the front page our, our main stories of uh, former Prime Minister Nahas Angola giving or weighing in on the subject of uh, fish rot, especially the allegations that the ruling party Swapo might have benefited from uh, this bribery scam. So Nahas Angola here is uh, challenging the party leadership to come out and confirm or deny that uh, any funds from this scandal were advanced to the party. The last item is uh, of course uh, about new charges of the fish rot six that were crafted and piled this week on top of what they already were facing. Um, we, we know now that uh, for example Saki Shangala, the former justice minister, has a new charge related to obstruction of justice. This must be related to the alleged attempt uh, by one of his former employees to go into his house and remove uh, evidence. And uh, James Atwikulipi is facing a new charge of having apparently uh, uh, attempted to bribe an, a public official, a, an official of the Anti-Corruption Commission. This uh, sums up our front page for today. Uh, we'll be right back. So today I'm joined uh, on the, in the studio by none other than the governor of our beloved uh, Commerce region, uh, Laura Maclet Kashira. Governor, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much for having me. Yes, yes. L let's, let's get into it. Um, the, the first thing is, uh, is that you are leading um, uh, regional preparations for the independence uh, celebrations of our country, the 30th. Yes. What is the what is the nature of these preparations? What is the status? What, what must we look forward to? Um, thank you very much. Um, yes, uh, Commerce Region is the host mm -hmm. of the 30th Independence Celebration yeah. 2020. In actual fact, it has been a culture that every five years yeah. at the inauguration of the Head of State, mm -hmm. the event is hosted in Commerce Region. Okay. This time around is no different. We are already hard at work preparing mm -hmm. comes the D Day. Mm -hmm. And uh, we we are coming from different events that we have been holding. Yeah. So we have been telling ourselves that this one must be fireworks. Yes. It must be different than others. Mm -hmm. It must be memorable. Yes. And we are looking at every Namibians to come and attend this event. Yeah. We are in actual fact still at the initial stage. Yes. Uh, I can confess in you to say even the theme of the day is not yet out. Okay. But we are running behind time telling ourselves that if we are to wait for certain things, mm -hmm. the nation outside there will end up having questions and asking, is it coming? What is happening? Mm. As if people are becoming hesitant. Yes. So I can assure you 
that we want to make this day different from all the other previous celebration mm -hmm. that commerce ever had hosted. Okay. Uh, and in terms of resources, uh, because that question will always arise to say, do we have the resources? Do we have, uh, and, and, and part, of, part of what we see, mm -hmm. uh, what we have seen over the years is uh, officials traveling from all over the country, uh, from other regions and whatnot. Um, how do the resources look like for this event? Uh, human resources definitely we have. Mm -hmm. Financial resources we will make use of what is available, yeah. what has been provided to us. Yeah. And we, we know our status currently. Mm -hmm. We are not going to behave as if heaven has come down on earth. Yes. But with those few resources that we have, we are planning to make sure that we are able to provide entertainment. Mm -hmm. We are able to provide refreshment. Yes. Because this is celebration. Mm -hmm. Is not commemoration. Yes. So we really want to make sure that all the resources are put to use. Yes. And uh, we are also putting more stress on the volunteers of the region. Okay. That the people of the region, being the host, yes. are the ones that are in the forefront. Mm -hmm. We also critically look at the issue of uh, mobilization mm -hmm. to make sure that we take people to the arena, to the stadium. Yes in order for them to celebrate the day mm -hmm. and that is high on the priority of our of our arrangements mm -hmm, mm -hmm. other than that you know very well we are going to have uh, visitors from neighboring african countries yes. and we are geared and ready to to make that day really as i'm saying very memorable mm -hmm. because we really want to make them to wish wanting to come back to namibia sure. whether just for a visit or whatever the case might be mm. and that is the target that we've set ourselves and we wish and believe we are going to achieve that target okay wonderful mm -hmm. now governor the you know the there'll always be questions to say uh, have we done well over the past 30 years mm. to warrant celebrating our independence in, in the manner especially that is that is being uh, uh, contemplated uh, surely my dear one thing as namibians that we must remember is that development is ongoing yeah and uh, we shouldn't be too hard on ourselves yeah. in believing that we would have not done anything uh -huh. i do not think under the sun and the moon that could be possible yeah but equally, we are cognizant and we recognize we might not have done as good as we ought to have done. Yes. That recognition is there. Mm -hmm. Now, looking at 30 years, it's is not, is not a joke. Yeah. 30 years is quite a lot. Mm -hmm. And I, if you look at the current development status of the Republic of Namibia now, yeah. and you would have been present mm -hmm. at the independence of 1990. Yes definitely as a Namibian we must be all be proud mm -hmm. and say that in terms of development trying to bring services closer to our people yes definitely would have done a lot definitely and we are also not blind neither are we naive yeah. in recognizing and accepting that we have all different challenges mm -hmm. and we are not there where we wanted to be yes but as I'm saying development is ongoing mm -hmm. And we know what are those developmental aspects yes. that we need to take heads on. Uh -huh. Among them being, for example, housing, mm -hmm. water and electricity to our people, yes. the sanitation issue, yeah. and uh, hospitals, uh, health issues, all this we, have reco we recognize. Mm -hmm. And uh, like my president will always say, yeah. we have had the Namibian people. Yes. And we know where we need to put our efforts. Mm -hmm. And we are still going to do that. Definitely. Rome was not built in one day. <laughs> yeah. So Namibia will definitely not be built in one day. Sure. Yeah. Now, you, you spoke about, uh, you, you quoted the president. I think that was the biggest, uh, the, the most memorable quote uh, of anything that he said after the elections in November. Mm -hmm. you, you as governor are essentially the, uh, the foot soldier of the mm. president mm. Uh, in the region. When when the ruling party for which you were the deputy uh, secretary. secretary general mm. uh, until 
2017, I think. Mm. When, when the party didn't do very well in the region in which you are the sort of the political head, mm -hmm. what kind of post-mortem um, message did you give to the president to say, we lost constituencies in Winduk uh, in the November election uh, due to this, this w w what have been your observation as to why the party didn't do too well in the region? Uh, thank you very much once again. Um, politically, uh, we must uh, admit that the, the arena, the political arena is, is a bit quite different. Yeah. You hear people crying and speaking about change. Mm -hmm. We have seen what has happened in November, mm -hmm. the issue that came up of the independence candidate, mm -hmm. which was not actually uh, the wish of anybody or everybody. Yes. And uh, we are also aware of what exactly happened. Mm -hmm. As a party, we have also decided to make a post-mortem, yes. but we are going to generate some some papers that mm -hmm. will be presented to the structure of the party mm -hmm. in order for us to tell one another frankly yes. and uh, correct one another as to what exactly happened, where did we go wrong. Yeah. But remember, we being uh, one of those uh, former liberation movement, mm -hmm. especially those in SATAC, we seems to be, you know, we are, we are under a big watchful eye. Yes. And uh, we are probably uh, not uh, in exception mm. of others. Mm. Um, critics has it, and they are saying, for example, the, the biggest towns and cities, mm. they are being targeted. We are, we are aware of those. Mm. Mm. But that will not stop us from knowing exactly what has happened. Yes. Uh, Windhoek will not be um, an exception mm. into other even towns of the, of the country. Yes. But really, uh, something somewhere somehow is going wrong mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we'll take care of that definitely at a political level the political level yeah and and, and speaking of that um, um, um so you w one of the questions that that is being asked right now is there's an election again this year yep and the that subject that you just mentioned of independent candidates keeps coming up uh, mm -hmm. as as though we are going to see more of those in that mm -hmm. election mm -hmm. What is the likelihood that uh, Swapo would uh, plug these holes? Because we, the, the, the general feeling is that uh, people took advantage of some loopholes in the constitution. Mm -hmm. Are we likely to see the party converging to fix its constitution ahead of this election? Or why is it that uh, there seems to be no movement in that regard, such that uh, we are going to see probably more uh, independent candidates coming? <laughs> you, you, you know, th th that's now the, the part of the democracy that we brought al al around yeah. al or along the weather yeah. to this country. We enjoy that democracy, and that is one good, one good thing that Namibia is doing, yeah. is to practice democracy. Mm -hmm. uh, as I said, we are trying to look at where we went wrong, mm -hmm what exactly happened last time mm -hmm. and within the rank and file of the party we are going to address the issue mm -hmm. uh, that may not prohibit either the independent coming during the election of the local and regional council that are coming in november mm -hmm. but definitely we ought to have some intentions of seeing how best we we close those gaps and loopholes mm. but then again Remember, people are practicing their democratic rights. Yes, indeed. And that we cannot stop. Indeed. So let them go on, and we also find our way how best we'll go around the whole issue in case. Indeed. Yeah. Now, Governor, you, when, you, when you were governor from Haika region for a long time, the, the, the manner in which governors became governors mm -hmm. was different. Yep. There were amendments to the constitution, I think, Mm -hmm. which then um, allowed the president to appoint directly the governors. Mm -hmm. This is a very contentious issue. Um, uh, and, and people, you know, referred to how the ruling party in particular was uh, struggling to, to topple uh, UDF in, uh, in, in, in Kunene. And people started linking mm -hmm. that to maybe the party needed to do something to make sure that now it has the grip uh, o over the over the regions, 
how is it um, how do you compare the two manners in which governors are appointed compared because you you have uh, you have ex experienced both um, you know what in in actual fact why the issue of governors to be appointed mm -hmm. it was not a political issue I was the councillor of Hobape's constituency. And while I was the councillor of the Hobape's constituency, I was equally the chairperson of the regional council, mm. meaning that person being the chairperson. Yeah. And that person was referred to as the governor. Mm -hmm. So what normally would happen is that you would not equally attend to your constituency as you are attending to the region. Mm. Because my Heke region, for example, I've got seven constituencies. Yeah. So what it meant is that you have your constituency and then equally you have the whole region of mm. the seven constituencies. Mm. So that on the shoulder of an individual, one was suffering at, at, at the cost of the other one. Mm -hmm. So that really caused the amendment of the act to say, let's separate the two. Mm. Let governor be governor, let councillors be councillors. Mm -hmm. And, and I think it really is supposed to work better. Mm -hmm. Having one office, concentrate on that one office, mm -hmm. other than just jumping the show yes, all yes. over from one corner to another. Mm -hmm. So it was not really as, as, as we tried to, to put it as if, you know, politically mm -hmm. we were trying to capture here or there. Mm -hmm. we, we only meant for proper management and administration of the regions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here in commerce, you and for you, maybe it's even uh, different now because you you are in charge of a region that is very very urban. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm trying to to draw the lines of where of the demarcations of where your authority and where your functions end and where they start uh, in comparison with, for example, the city of Winduk that runs Winduk. Of, of course, I know that you you are that that commerce also has uh, rural constituencies or areas that you can oversee but in terms of a place like Winduk how would your, your your role be different from that of the city of Winduk and the councillors mm -hmm. uh, is, is there no overlap of functions there um yes um the office of the governor mm -hmm. act as a representative between the central government uh, we also act as representative between the regional council, mm -hmm. the city of Winduk being the local authorities, yeah. and as well as the traditional authorities, mm -hmm. if at all they are within the given region. Yeah. Now, my main part that I really act, and then we also act in terms of investigating yes. and reporting to the head of state, uh -huh. as well as our line minister, in this case, the Minister of Urban and Rural Development. Yes. And uh, the best way to do it is to coordinate. Yeah. We are all taking care of the residents of mm -hmm. Winduk, mm -hmm. but there are boundaries. Mm. The office of the governor will come from there to here. Mm -hmm. The city of Winduk is from here to there. Mm -hmm. Now look at the, the setup of the city of Winduk as well as the Commerce Regional Council. Mm. Nine of the constituencies of Commerce. Mm -hmm. are within the boundaries of the city of Winduk, yeah. in exception of Commerce Rural. Mm. But what I have brought about is that we have got a forum mm -hmm. where we have decided that we must coordinate mm. and plan together. Yes. Because at the end of the day, we only give service to one person, and mm -hmm. that person is the residents. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to see a situation whereby the city goes and say this, mm -hmm. then tomorrow regional council comes in and say that, yeah. and then the office of the governor sees something different. Mm -hmm. We are actually, in a way, maybe trying to confuse, confuse the, the residents. Mm -hmm. So the planning and the, uh, the implementation goes hand in hand, yeah. and we are just trying to avoid some of those confusion. Otherwise, we know our boundaries, Everybody knows where you start, where you end, mm -hmm. and I think it's not causing any confusion. Okay. The, 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 the also, the, the way in which um, the new deployment of governors is done these days is a bit different because you are no longer, per se, if I understand the concept correctly, mm -hmm. you are no longer like uh, 
fully in charge of the regional council. You have we have a separate office mm -hmm. with a, a, a very lean staff complement mm -hmm. and a very very small budget. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the governors was telling me uh, she only got I think four hundred thousand for for the entire financial year. Mm. Uh, how how do you na navigate your way with these new circumstances, given the amount of of, of, of expectation that people have for yeah. the office. We are still alive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's yeah. how we actually navigate around. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, the office of the regional governor have got only four staff members. Yeah. Uh, that's the governor, the advisor, mm. the PA, as well as the administrator. Okay. And then, of course, you have the drivers and the secretaries and mm. what have you. Mm. Uh, we are also housed within the Commerce Regional Council, for example, in my case. Mm -hmm. uh, at one point, I was housed at uh, France in Dongo Garden, yeah. uh, which I said I cannot be, you know, <laughs> be a head of an institution, yet I'm, you know, I'm, mm. I'm housed at somewhere. So I, I have relocated. Yes. I'm now with the Commerce Regional Council, and it makes things very easy. Yeah. For us, when we want to consult, for us, when we want to meet, and for us, when we we really want to have some collective and uh, programs that we are sharing together, mm -hmm. so that makes the whole process very easy. Mm -hmm. In terms of uh, of the budget, of course, definitely we only only have got the operational budget. Mm -hmm. uh, but otherwise, other than that, we survive from donor fundings mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, as I said, we are still alive. Yes, we are there. We are kicking and. Uh, the, the good thing is that we are able to coordinate yeah. and make sure that the development and the affairs of the region yeah. through the office of the governors, they are coordinated. So and I have established a very yeah. good working relationship mm. with the city of Windhoek, mm. with the regional council, as well as with the only one traditional authority that I have in the region. Indeed. So so you, you are convinced that indeed uh, this this position of governors is, is this job is actually still relevant to have w it's, it is still relevant to have governors uh, uh, just given the background the, the, the kind of work that you do you are still convinced that we need governors in this country yeah it is relevant yeah. because that's the link between yes. central government the regional council and the the, the, the local authorities yeah uh, we, we cannot all at yeah. one time or different times stand up yeah. and run to the state house yes one is getting through this door the other okay. through the other door and different issues yeah. that we are trying to believe to bring all to the office of uh, of the or to the state house yes. but rather to have a mechanism and a system in place mm -hmm. that really control and manage the system mm -hmm. and that is why i am saying we are the link yes between the central government and the local the regional councils Indeed. So it, it is really working well, yeah. but we, we are human beings. Yes. We are human beings. Sometimes, somehow, you find us pushing one another. But that is now relevant for, for this platform. Yes. But these things do happen. Indeed. Yeah. The last question, Governor, is um, again going back to the ruling party. I'm, I'm, I'm putting these questions to you because you've served at a very, very high level <laughs> <laughs> in the party as Deputy SG of the party. So. The, the party is not, I, I don't think it's a secret that uh, the party is still divided. Uh, there are still factions in the party. What is it that as, a, as, a, as, a, as someone who served uh, at that level before, what is it uh, that Swapo must do to really reorganize itself and start speaking the same language? Uh, uh, you have people saying no, some people are convicted of corruption, they shouldn't go to parliament, some are saying oh but those that are in jail, they have not even been convicted of anything, are already being taken away from the list. What is, what, how do you harmonize the views and, and aspirations of all members of the party? Um, <laughs> I remember when I came here, I came specifically for, for the invitation of uh, people to come and attend the, the independence celebration. Yes. I know where you are trying to take me to, <laughs> but let me quickly just take you through that the Swapo party yeah. has got structures in place. Yeah. And uh, when I was the Deputy Secretary General, that was then, during then, mm -hmm. uh, we have got structures 
we have got mandate to do certain things and not to do certain things. Mm -hmm. So I am not going to venture around the question of unity within the party, mm -hmm. since I'm not in any way delegated yes. to come and deal with that issue, because I wouldn't want to say things that I'm not supposed to be saying. Okay. But all I'm, I'm able to tell you while I'm sitting is here is that Swapo will take care with what, of whatever is broken, will mend it. Okay. Believe me, you. <laughs> no, that's good. I, I, I'm <laughs> I was asking these questions because it's not. Uh, we are not always lucky to have uh, people of your of your level <laughs> in our <Really>? platform. So, <laughs> so please understand. But but fair enough. I do. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, so yeah, yeah. So 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 thank you very much, Governor, for popping in. Um, and 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 all the best for your preparations for the mm -hmm. 30th uh, Independence Anniversary. I think it's a milestone for our country. And uh, any well wish, and, and any well intended person must only really wish yeah. you to succeed yeah. in your preparations. Yeah. In closing, uh, allow me to invite the residents of Commerce Region mm -hmm. to be ready and to attend yes. the 30th anniversary celebration comes 21st March 2020 at the Independence Stadium. We are expecting every Namibians, mm. every proud Namibians mm, mm. to come so that we celebrate this day, all of us together. It is our day. It is our independence. It is our Namibia. Indeed. Without us, there will be no Namibia. Indeed. Thank you for having me. Indeed. You are invited, Namibia, to the celebrations of our 30th uh, anniversary of independence for our country, as you heard from... Uh, the Governor of Commerce Region, uh, Mac, uh, Laura MacLeod uh, Kashir, was speaking to us about that and a few other things. We'll be right back. That was tonight's show. We'll see you tomorrow.